Welcome to Test Suit Talk WWE Clash of the Champions review. Uh, before I get into that, please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you guys can keep up with the shows. Yes, yeah, sooner or later we're going to have uh, more shows, more content. But you need to subscribe, show your love so the show can ha get, get some support and we can get this thing rolling bigger than what it is right now. Yes, Clash of the Champions. WWE Clash of the Champions. Ah, uh, it was what I thought it would be. Pretty much most of my predictions came true, except one, I think. Uh, the first kickoff show, Mojo Rowley versus Zack Ryder. Um, it was pretty much a squash match. Uh, Mojo Rowley, I'm pretty sure they're really trying to pull over. Uh, his package for preview package for him going into the match was uh about him uh nxt winning the andre uh G the giant battle royal uh so that's pretty much trying to put him over big they had zach Ryder had his, his own preview package as well but mojo you can tell they're trying to put him over everybody know mojo's going over uh but it was pretty much kind of like a squash match and you know mojo went over so i think smackdown is going to from here on out uh, build him up to some kind of storyline or a future type of type of setting for a title run, either U.S. or I won't say World Championship. That's too soon, but probably U.S. title. We shall see. <clears throat> Next, we had Dolph Ziggler versus Baron Corbin versus Bobby Roode for the United States Championship Triple Threat match. I'll be honest. I was watching football, the Cowboys versus the Raiders at the same time, so. This match, I watched the entrances. Uh, Ziggler came out. I guess he's still doing the same thing uh, with the music sc uh, scratches off, and he comes out with no music, and he's serious. And I was like, why do they keep doing these, these uh, you know, like they're going to push Ziggler, and they're not going to push him, or like he's going to evolve with his character. Well, I was wrong. Obviously, they're trying to make him evolve with his character because, surprisingly, he won. I I actually predicted that he will lose um, and take the pinfall. The reason why he was in a match for Bobby Roode to go over, be champion for a sample, a sample run with the title, and so the company can see how Bobby Roode do with the title. And if he does good, uh, have him beat Baron Corbin fair and square, one-on-one at Royal Rumble. Or just take the title back off of him if he does not do good with the short title run until Royal Rumble. But they totally just, you know, blindsided everybody and Dolph Ziggler won, which everybody know he's pretty much the company's um, stepping stone slash, you know, dummy where people just use to make he make them look good in the ring and uh, put them over with bumps. And the next thing you know, he's back on the shelf as just being the guy that just a stepping stone. But in this one, he came he came out with a whim. And actually, that's what talk, caught my attention back to the screen when he uh, actually won because I was looking at football and this at the same time. And I was like, what? So I'm actually intrigued. I'm actually intrigued to see what they're going to do with Zolf Ziggler. Ziggler. I want to see if they're going to um, really go full throttle because we saw this before with him in the past where they try to seem like they're going in a direction with him and they pull a the title away from him and just, like, do not give him any kind of serious push. They give him a brief push, I guess, to see what he does, and then they just take it from him. So let's see how, what goes with that. I really want to see Bobby Roode. I thought he should have got a, a title or ring, but we'll see. This, it probably continues into Royal Rumble because with Ziggler with the belt, is more of a chance they'd be another triple threat. Anyway, next was what I think was probably the best match of the night, and I had more attention, paid more attention to, was SmackDown ta uh, tag team titles, the Usos defending against the New Day, Chad Gabriel and Sheldon Benjamin, and Rusev and Aiden English. Um, I thought it was a great match. Uh, probably one of the best matches I've seen Uso. I mean, Uso. I'm sorry, Rus Rusev in other than his, his matches with Big E before. Both guys kind of, you know, before Big E went to New Day. Um, the Usos, as usual, they're, they're good entertainers. Um, 
just high flying. But it was a lot of good spots in this match. It's like you said, a lot, all these guys came together. A lot of good uh, workers in this match. So, I mean, how can it not be a good match when you got a lot of good workers all together putting their creative minds together to, you know, make a, a, a great match for the fans? It was a good match. Everybody got to get their stuff in. I'm glad Chad Gable got to show uh, things he did in the NXT that put him over. Uh, just a lot of good stuff in this match. But, uh, yeah, Usos retained. I predicted that. I say either that or Chad Gable or Sheldon Benjamin go over. But um, uh, that didn't happen. I thought they'd probably do that with them guys just like I thought they would do with Bobby Roode to give them a, a little small run to Royal Rumble, see how they do, and, and building a fan uh, base or not. But they went with the Usos. I mean, Usos is a safe bet. They're over. I mean, I, I even see people in the, in the crowd with uh, uh, one day of shirts, and uh, that means when, you, when you're selling merchandise, you're over. So, I mean, the Usos are over, and uh, I really don't see nobody take it from them. Uh, for a while, I don't know if they have a plan to. Well, they got the Bludgeon Brothers, which I'm get into in a minute. So I'm pretty sure that's where they're going with it. Uh, I think they're going to put those guys against them, probably at Royal Rumble. I can see that happening. But other than that, I really see what they have planned for them. If that's not the next step, yeah. So the Usos went over, and uh, it was a good match. I think a match of the night. <clears throat> next was oh my gosh, uh, which I see these girls work twice. Uh, NXT and in the big roster, and I think the third time they worked, I didn't, I didn't catch that one. But SmackDown Women's Champion Charlotte defending her title against Natalia. I say I say uh, Natalie because that's what they called her on Total Devious because that's why Nora has her real name. Well, anyway, Natalia in a lumberjack match. You know, all the girls around the ring trying to keep them staying inside the ring. Yada yada. Um, this match, uh, I, I thought. It, it went too kind of it, – it was going – it's like they was trying to rush it. I don't know if it was like – had certain uh, – I mean, had, they, of course, you had to have certain minutes to get the matches done. But it's like they was rushing it. And at the same time, it just, it just came out not really sloppy, but just like uh, like the story. I, I feel like it was really no story there other than just talking to try to the, – the, the taunting between the women trying to show the story. But it's like it was kind of going too fast-paced and like – not enough time for the crowd to digest what was going on in the ring. Uh, but Charlotte goes over. I mean, everybody should have known, known that was what happened. I mean, I don't see them why would they try to put the belt on Natalia. Uh, she's really uh, – she's not over at all. Uh, she's a good worker. She's a good person to be in the ring with the greener girls and get them over or, you know, like, like she's there to teach the younger girls a lot. Uh, I think that's why she's still there. Uh, she knows a lot, and I think she probably one day probably be the first female agent, you know, sitting in the back, uh, you know, or, or official. Um, yeah, Charlotte went over. I, I see Charlotte uh, actually building up to a storyline, probably with Naomi again. Who knows? Uh, it, the door is way o- wide open on that. I really don't know where they're going with that. Uh, you got uh, Ruby Riot and the Riot Squad. That could be uh, some kind of new storyline with Charlotte. Uh, I think they have a great match. Ruby Riot is amazing. Like she got that high flying style, like um, uh, Naomi Trinity, what they call her uh, on WWE. She got two names. I just like uh, Natalia has on Total Divas. So I'm, I get confused sometimes. But uh, Trinity, she's just like Trinity, high flying. But I think she got a better skill set. Trinity is one of those, she's just like her her husband uh, on the Usos. Their training were not as detailed uh, uh, as probably Ruby Riot is to a point where it's like they're they good at doing spots and moves, but actually, like, you know, ring technician, she's not. Ruby is a ring technician, technician, and she's a good high flyer and, you know, a good good worker. So I'd love to see her in Charlotte, see how that goes. Of course, she got the, her two um, side chicks to probably interfere, and that could be a, a good storyline. For uh, Charlotte, especially going to Royal Rumble. Um, next is the Bludgeon Brothers, <laughs> or Kane Brothers, because they pretty much wearing Kane outfit. Were more like um, Merlot or is that color? Is, it, is maroon a good color? Okay, my wife is waving uh, head. She's bobbing her head, saying that's a color. Yeah, she's in the building. Like usually, don't be in be in my podcast, but. Uh, yeah, she's she's here. Yeah, 
actually she's, she's good energy right here anyway yeah so maroon yeah like maroon type color uh anyway uh yeah just like everybody thought the Bludgeon brothers been uh on a path of destruction so the same thing with uh Rizongo. they just smashed them uh it was kind of weird because like I think they are they would have like I said, I have been kick, keeping up with SmackDown, but I'm pretty sure they're the ones that have been destroying their uh, office and, you know, being, you know, leaving the, the clues and stuff like that. So you thought they would give them, like, a little bit more time and a little bit more storytelling, even though I know you're trying to get them over. Uh, the buildup is so long for to see who it was, which I'm pretty sure WWE really have nobody in mind uh, in the beginning, but the longer it went, they just keep trying to, Keep it prolong the storyline. Then if I say, okay, let's put uh, Luke Harper and Eric Rowan over and just make them the guys that have been uh, harassing them. But anyway, um, I thought being that they had a story, they had it longer. But I saw where it was going once uh, I think Eric Rowan rushed the corner towards um, Fandango and uh, Van Dango and uh, he jumped off like he was scared. And I was like, oh, okay, they're about to squash him. Uh, so, yeah, they went over uh, pretty much, like I said earlier, with the tag team titles. I can see these guys, you know, getting a run at it because they're trying to push them hard, so why not? And I'm pretty sure Usos go go over on these guys because, like, I don't think uh, Vince and them are, are – I think probably Road Dog probably fun of these guys. I mean, but I don't think Vince is fun of them. So I think it, it's good to just to make them uh, – put them over strong – so, like, Usos got a challenge and a, and a possibility of losing the titles. But I doubt that they win the titles because I don't think nobody's nobody higher up that really makes the last decisions is really big on them uh, at all. But we'll see. Uh, next was Kev- – oh, my gosh. Okay. I don't know how everybody else feels, maybe because you're a fan of, of most of these workers in this match. Uh, I mean, I mean, even including the referees. I – Thought it was just a clusterfuck. I mean, like, to me, it hurt my head watching this match. Uh, the match I'm talking about, of course, is Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn versus uh, Shinsei Nakamura and Randy Orton. <sighs> I the thing about it, I'm sitting there trying to tell a story between just basically the match, just basically the Daniel Bryan Shane McMahon match, even though, even though they, they were the refs. In his match, but it was just so, it was so much going on. It hurt my head. It's just like they're trying to tell a story, but it's just like you're watching a match with a story going on in the middle, which is Shane and, and, and Daniel, and then it's like moves going on. It, 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 to me, it hurt my head. It was like a, a tornado is going on, and you see Daniel, Daniel Bryan and Shane twisting around, and and the rest was like in the middle. It, it, it was like a big tornado clusterfuck of just. A match to me, it hurt my head. Like I said, uh, Sami Zayn and Owens went over. Of course, they're not going to be fired. Uh, stupidity. If they did do that, they probably did a storyline where they're boycotting or whatever and got back inside for a contract. So it's it's, it's just you know, stupidity. Nobody knew. They, everybody knew they wasn't going to lose. It's just a match to build up around uh, Shane and uh, Daniel which I think a lot of people still speculating Daniel coming back or not. I think he's going to be him Shane at WrestleMania. Uh, I think this is exactly, exactly what they're building up to. Uh, I don't know how they're going to build this to Royal Rumble to make this kind of pre-long without them actually fighting. But I'm pretty sure it's going to be a road to WrestleMania type thing. And they probably do They probably do something where to a point where it makes sense why it's going to take too long for it to happen. Like, okay, Daniel, you've been out so long, you need to get back in the, into the gym or get back into training to prepare for this match against Shane for WrestleMania. So all that whole time he'll be training, building up to WrestleMania. That's how I could, that's how I would write it, put it like that. I, I wouldn't say even see it. That's how I would write it. Uh, but I think uh, Shane McMahon and Daniel Bryan uh, probably wrestle. Uh, if not, it's a storyline for – Control over SmackDown probably. Probably Shane is really uh, – probably Sh- Shane contract is up or Shane pretty much uh, feel like he did his due diligence uh, for the company and now you want to go off and uh, to the sunset again for a long time and not deal with the company unless probably when Vince stepped down, they'll probably help out. 
Uh, but yeah, this match was uh, people probably differ. Like I said, comment below. Comment below. Give me your comments. Give me your thoughts. Uh, uh, you got questions to uh, to ask? Do that as well. But give me your comments on these matches. If you disagree with me, I mean, you know, everybody got their opinion. I don't expect you to agree uh, agree with me twenty four seven. I expect you to have your own opinion. That's 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 what life is. This was that's what the comments section is for down there. So give me your comments. Uh, next was AJ Styles versus Jinder Mahal. I watched a little bit of their first match when uh, AJ got the belt back, uh, and obviously said that's probably Jinder's best match. I feel the same way about this one. I feel like this is probably uh, Jinder's uh, one of his best match, decent matches I saw. I really, like I said, I watched the football game, and this is a main I should be paying attention. I was, but it was just like I, I'm not invested into it. I already know AJ is going over. Uh, if the Indian tour is coming up soon, I would have said, okay, General Hall have a, a, chance, uh, a shot. But knowing that WWE didn't rush to put the belt back on him on the Indian tour, which is a whole concept of giving him the title because he's Indian, then they would have did it earlier, and it would have been AJ against AJ against General Mahal, uh, General Mahal being the champion, AJ being the challenger. They didn't do that, so I knew he was going over. Um, but at the same time, the same time, uh, what they I give give to it is that AJ knowing, I don't know if AJ presented this or the the writers presented this, presented presented this and AJ knowing him, I know he came up with the idea to make the match pre long, but I don't know who came up with the idea. Okay, Jenner's everybody know Jenner is not that great, and everybody know Jenner really can't beat you. So to, for him to for him to put heat on you and last. For a uh, what fifteen minute match or whatever it was, it's not people won't believe that. So you got to think a way for it to have longevity and be you know logical in some way. Or even AJ probably came up with the idea, you know, saying like you're not over. Everybody think you're a jobber. Uh, so the the uh, spot where AJ uh, got ran into the barricade and it flipped over and hurt his ribs was perfect. You know, so it made AJ uh, handicap, you know, for for you know for the majority of the match. So Jenner had the advantage to put heat on him without the scene brothers being involved. So that that I like that psychology of that. Um, so that that makes sense. I mean, that, that's one thing that stuck out to me, if anything. Uh, and then at the, well, what got me at the end when the scene brothers interfered because everybody, I, I think everybody thought they they was going to um, they were going to. Uh, turn on gender, I thought so too because I know he, you know, when f- got frustrated, frustrated with them twice, and uh, did the, his finisher on both of the guys twice. So you think he had, he had changed on them, but I think they probably had that in mind. And when they got closer to to this pay per view, they thought, you know what, gender is nobody without them. Like he's not going to. Uh, and that's what I think too. Like I think they did that spot with him going on. Uh, uh, you know, beating them those guys up, the scene brothers, because they thought the crowd probably like them more, I guess. You know what I'm saying? I, I think it didn't go over the crowd. The crowd was like, we don't give a fuck. Like, we still hate you. You know, we, we just like you as a worker. That I think they just switched their mind. So, you know what? Let him keep um, the, the scene brothers because he needs them because that's, that's his crutch because he's not going to, you know, prolong his career or, you know, be uh, believable as a winner with them uh, not on the side. So, uh, obviously, they're still with him. Uh, they interfered as usual. He got the Colossal on. AJ kicked out. But what's weird is that the ref kind of killed that spot because I don't know if the ref want to make sure that the match didn't get fucked up and he got, you know, in trouble because he counted so slow. He was like, one, two, and AJ cut, kicked out. And I think AJ was very aware, you know, uh, Visually could see him, his peripheral could see the ref, the ref, so he could he could kick out. But I think the ref, I think the ref want to make sure that he saw, uh, you know, uh, the count. So it was, it was kind of slow, which killed that that you know that false finish, which I thought it would have been a great false finish because everybody thought, oh shit, okay, Coloss, here he goes again. Jinder gonna win the title, messed that up. But anyway, AJ wins, like everybody thought. Um, it's very interesting. Like a lot, a lot of these endings, it's very interesting to see how, how where they're going with this. There, there's like nothing really um, 
uh, uh, predictable about what's next for any of these guys. So it, it'd be different. Like most WWE pay-per-views, you can see who's coming up, who's who's uh, potentially be next. But it's haven't been really been nobody on on SmackDown that's actually been, uh, you know, uh, kind of in the light of being a challenger for the title next. So it's very interesting where they're going with this, even the tag team titles. But like I said, I I can see the Bludgeon Brothers being next because they are getting pushed. So that's kind of uh, considered predictable. Um, Dolph Ziggler thing, I can see uh, that being a two uh, a, a, a part two, uh, a match, all three guys again because Art Baron Corbin by itself going after him. Uh, or they could do something where Dolph probably loses lose the next night. They're good for doing, you know, that shock value, make you look at the show and they take the title right back off the person because they was using it to, to reel you in, a piece of bait. Who knows? Leave your comments at the bottom. Uh, let me know what you think about your thoughts on, on this pay-per-view. Uh, it, it, was, it was what I thought it would be. Uh, it, was, it was a show for them to pretty much, you know, fill in the month. I think uh, it was like really nothing here to feel like it's uh, gearing up for um, Road to WrestleMania, which is January pretty much, Royal Rumble. Um, but, yeah, please hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, hit the notification bell. And as always, people, keep it testing. <laughs>